morning. My name is Nancy Watt, and I'm really happy to be here. This is my first AIN conference, and I'm just, this is crazy. You people are really different. I've never been hugged. I have never been at a conference where I get hugged at, re at registration. It's really different. Thank you, Barbara. It's just a little different. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in the gondola. I will not. I will not. You know I will not do that. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you a little story about how improv met forensic psychiatry. Thank you. I come from Hamilton, Ontario. Hamilton, Ontario, Ontario is about 45 minutes southwest of Toronto. It is about a, a seven and a half hour drive due west of here. It's a blue collar steel town, much like American Pittsburgh, you know, and we have uh, our steel industry is uh, what is known, that, that is what Hamilton is known for. Uh, our steel town in the, uh, in the last decade or so has been going south as it, the manufacturing sector has been struggling and so consequently the economic fallout of that is significant. The cascade of economic distress is a real thing and uh, that um, you know that ripple effect uh, affected my city greatly and over the last 10 to 15 years we had empty warehouses and, and lofts and things and when that happens like any urban renewal when you have those vacancies in comes the starving artists and the designers and the musicians and I tell you in the last decade, we have transformed ourselves into an amazingly significant cultural arts center in what we call the Hammer, in the Hamilton. Thank you. I'm wickedly excited about it. I have loved to be just to played a small part in that transformation. And now I can tell you that in, ha that in the Hammer, we like to say, art is the new steel. It is a very big deal to us. It is a very big deal. Um, I, I tell you that in the next 150,000 people came to something that we have there called the Super Crawl. It is a fantastic celebration of art and music and food and everything that's going on in the Hammer. So uh, Hamilton is really enjoying this resurgence. This is our Staircase Theater. It is a heritage place. This is where we do improv. Um, it, is a, it is a wonderful uh, theater run by a very talented woman, Colette Kendall. It is, it is a micro theater. We just hold 65. It's a very, it makes for a very intimate uh, space. We have film festivals and improv and, and uh, uh, solo performances and some fantastic theater. And then on the outside, sorry, go back, please. Go back uh, to there, and um, our staircase has a cafe and uh, uh, comedy routines and poetry slams and all sorts of things. We have about 100 events going there a month. Thank you. Um, Hamilton Health Sciences is also what um, uh, we are known for. This is a world-renowned, world-class academic tertiary center. Um, it is comprised of seven, uh, uh, seven facilities. Uh, one which is significant is St. Joseph's Healthcare. Um, Hamilton Health Sciences is an academic medical school and we have, uh, because of its integrity and innovation in, in their inquiry, we are known as a world leader in a tremendous amount of uh, education and research. It is the home of evidence-based medicine. Uh, you can just go right to the next one. It is uh, in 2014 these doors opened. We had a large injection of healthcare dollars uh, to the Hamilton area to uh, develop this facility. Um, this uh, addiction and mental health center services all of central and southwestern Ontario. Um, mental health has um, we need a lot of dollars, it's a huge problem. And we have barely, we have begun to uh, uh, really impact uh, the work that needs to be done. So uh, this is a very important facility and it is also a home to a lot of uh, research and education going on. I will share with you that in my family tree, we have been affected by mental illness. 
this is kind of what my family tree looks like. <laughs> The, um, it is, uh, and so several years ago in 2012, I was asked to be a part of the Quality Council. The Quality Council of uh, St. Joseph's Healthcare for Addiction and Mental Health is comprised of all of the social agencies and the, and the departments who are the healthcare providers. On those Quality Councils, they want to have a family and patient advisor to those, those who are familiar with the system, those who have had loved ones go through the system. I am that. In one of those quality, oh, you're so, this is the woman who hugged me at registration. <laughs> oh. How cool are you? I do love her. I love, I love her. Oh, she's fantastic. In one of those quality councils, I met this woman. Dr. Prathasarathy, everyone just calls her Dr. P. She is very intelligent and incredibly kind. And on one day in the Quality Council meeting, she was talking about an initiative that she was doing. She's a psychiatrist at Inpatient Psychology. It was called Positive Psychology. And I had told her about this event, that this, uh, we had had um, improv delivered at a community center, mostly for young male sex trade workers. And they were good. And th th these young men did not come back to, uh, for the housing application or the um, free muffins or the group therapy, but they keep coming back for improv. And, and we, we hit it off and we became fast friends and she was intrigued. And so this, this arts resurgence in my Hamilton met this research-based hospital medical community and very quickly, I was doing some improv in inpatient psychiatry. It was so much fun. I can't, I can't tell you. It was, uh, the first thing I did, it was, um, in their lunchroom um, uh, lounge area. And I came in early and in bright tape, I taped out my stage. I taped out the space, you know? And I also uh, had cut out some footsteps and I made a path coming onto the stage. And then I came out and I, and I introduced myself to everyone in the lunchroom and around. And, and it made um, doing, that, doing that simple task was very effective, it really worked. As soon as they came on the stage, their whole countenance changed, as you know. You know, like it can, it changed, it gave them that, uh, it, it gave them that invitation. And the little pathway, they, they indeed followed up. Um, the Usha introduced me and, um, and I needed to just go around the room initially and ask their name and get, tell me something, one thing that they like, one thing that they're good at. And I got offers like soccer and knitting and um, housework and fishing. And I'm not very good with names, but I remembered everything that everyone was good at. So when the offer to come up, um, the offer had already been given to me and I would invite him up and we're gonna talk about fishing and I already know that you're good at that, so come on up. And it was, it was an easy in, you know? So um, it, was, it was an amazing, they had this game of yes and. I had given him, uh, he had his fishing rod he was good at fishing, and uh, he's, I've, this is my fishing rod, and ha handed it to the next woman, and she said, yes, and, and very quickly there was something on the fishing rod, and they were off, you know, and, and then it went on and on, and yes, and, and yes, and, and, you know, it got away, the, what was ever on the fishing rod, as it does, but it actually had a good, it was a good, simple, clean uh, scene. It even had resolution. They changed the bait on the on the fishing rod, and and uh, there was something about superstition, and and it it worked. It worked. I believe every artist needs to be both a part of the creative process and the creative process in and of itself. We need to both be introspective and, and uh, internal and, and, and an external part of that process. It, it, it behooves me to understand this intimately, both what I do and why I do it. Two minutes, okay. We're in good time, we're perfect. However, in improv and forensic psychiatry is a little different. This is a little different. It is not necessarily what we, uh, what we think. 
I, uh, Usha, my good friend and, and brilliant psychiatrist, uh, Usha had moved over to from inpatient psychiatry to forensics. And so she invited me to, to do the same thing. Let's continue with the improv there. I did. It was great. However, this time, both the staff and the patients were involved. And we came into, we came into the lounge area, and the staff were giving me these looks like, are you kidding me? Like, Usha gave me no heads up about this, right? She had, but they were not, they were truly reticent to it. So I had to, uh, I uh, did this, we breathed and we stretched and they were good with that. And again, we went around and named and tell me one thing that you're good at, both the, both the staff and the patients. And then we did that walk around. I don't know, we called games different things in different areas, I've noticed. The walk around memory is just where you use the space, you walk around, you walk around, and then when the person you meet up with is someone that you know that you but you just can't remember their name and hey you know you have those little interactions that quick little improv scenes and you go around with those type of scenarios and that was easy and it was an easy win and, and quickly they were doing improv um, yes and and uh, the funniest thing of gibberish I have ever seen uh, anywhere. They did a fantastic job with gibberish. It was really, really great. It was the staff that was interpreting and the other one was the patient interpreting for the staff, you know, I sort of, and it was, it was great. Um, forensic, psych, uh, forensic psychiatry is different in that. This is a, this is a, a subspecialty of psychiatry that is um, managed by our legal. It, it is the judiciary that uh, monitors the patient they are in consultation with the medical community. The user of a forensic mental health facility, their uh, progress is monitored by the Ontario Review Board, which is a, a judicial uh, board, uh, and the medical people are um, in, uh, used as consultants about that. And sometimes those cultures can clash. They have, is he, is he an accused person or is he a patient? It is a very interesting and challenging uh, culture to work uh, to work in, and to um, uh, and there are some of the hardest working people and uh, that I have had the pleasure to meet. Some of the constraints that I have uh, experienced thus far: we had gone in to forensic and just started doing what we were doing, and then someone got wind that Nancy Watt does not have the right volunteer status at the hospital. I have been on the quality council, I have volunteer status, but not for forensics, I do not. So there was like, there was four months of uh, police checks and blood work and, and four reference letters and everything. It was a big, it was sort of a big deal. Uh, there was some nursing concerns, you know, about making sure that they were good. The union issue had stuff because am I taking a job away from the rec therapist, you know? And, and we did uh, Phoenix grants. Uh, we didn't get the one from 2015. We will be applying again for 2016, which will, uh, give them the funds to make this a proper uh, paper, and uh, right now it's in the ethics committee. So it's uh, that's those are some of the constraints. But um, you know the and part to the yes and of this experience is that what I have now is improv that has cascaded within the healthcare system. I have. Um, the Youth Wellness Center, which is like a mental health youth drop-in center in Hamilton, and these these kids are amazing. Oh my goodness, they're, uh, this one uh, boy, he's not a boy, he's a young man, but he likes to call it improvocation. <laughs> and it is, and it is. The, um, uh, the Men's Addiction Services Hamilton, I've done improv there. It's our MASH, we like to, it's a MASH unit. I've had interest in the anxiety clinic and I've also been involved in a creative writing program for 10 years and, and I have implemented some improv with there. What, finally, I have, this is my last slide. I have seen something very close to freedom in I experience in improv. And for those who are incarcerated, that has meaningful irony. I can tell you that if it is true, like did you know that the lateral prefrontal part of our brain, the, that part which is responsible for the self-monitoring, you know that editor, you know that voice in your head, we like to call it the head editor, you know? The, um, that is suppressed when we do improv. What is expressed, what is activated, what lights up is your medial prefrontal which is responsible for the self-expression.
that is freeing, that is freeing. And if it is true that as a psychiatric nurse told me, she believes that all mental illness is a form of profound disconnection, I know, we know that improv is all about profound connection. And I've been very blessed and very humbled and grateful to have an opportunity in playing a little bit in some people's freedom. Thank you. Thank you.